Hello, everybody. Welcome to Most Wanted Topics. I'm your host, Kevin, along with me, Atomic Tommy, broadcasting from our studio in beautiful Bloomington, Minnesota, here at Most Wanted Comics, our ultimate comics and pop culture store. Atomic yep. Tommy, how you doing today? I'm doing good, as always. We are in the spirit. I know we had this debate last episode if it was too early to start Christmas, and uh, some people are still adamant about after Thanksgiving, but we here at... Uh, most wanted comics. We uh, we like it to be in a Christmas spirit now because we do a lot of giving this time of year for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. And what you see, uh, well, the lighting is hard. We're going to get better studio lighting in the future. But um, you're seeing the pictures we put up here. We have prizes we're giving away because we are doing our food drive for Veep that still continues. We started on the eighth. We're running it through the nineteenth. If you bring non-perishable food items in. You get entered into a drawing to win some of these cool prizes, and I told you we were going to show them on the podcast, and here we are. Some of the cool prizes we're giving away. Tommy, these are unbelievable prizes. Some of the best prizes I've ever seen. (laughs) Hey, for giving away, we're giving it to the local food shop Veep here in Bloomington. You can't go wrong. We're giving away a Sergeant Slaughter package with a G.I. Joe Classified and... Our awesome pop figure, Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter was one of my favorite wrestlers. And, of course, G.I. Joe. You can't go wrong. So, uh, pop figure, G.I. Joe uh, package of Sergeant Slaughter. That's on the prize list you could win if you bring in some non-perishable food items, the most wanted comics. And the drawing for this is on the 19th because we we wrap up the food drive on the 19th. And uh, then we do the drawing on the 19th. You need not be present to win, but uh, you might want to be here for the fun party that we're going to have for the drawing. Uh, anyway, uh, nine eight slab of the twenty twenty two Amazing Spider Man number one. This is the Davis variant cover. Uh, nine eight CGC uh, Amazing Spider Man number one from twenty twenty two. So you can win that. Uh, have a wireless JBL Bluetooth speaker. Awesome sound. That's a that's a great prize you could win. Uh, so uh, I mean, these are just incentives to give. Uh, I think you wouldn't believe. And then not to mention the GI Joe. Diamond Gallery Baroness statue. These just came in. They're fresh off the truck for us here at Most Wanted, and That's we're true. giving one away off the rip. And so it's the blue variant, too. And it's, and it's the San Diego 2023 variant. So you can't really go wrong. This is up for grabs along with everything else my dad just mentioned here. So The San Diego 2023 blue variant Baroness statue. Diamond Gallery, highly recommend all these. Oh, and also we don't we're showing it just on the screen. We didn't have it here on the table, but you can see it right now. We got a giant poster of John Byrne, Fantastic Four. You're looking at that right now, and you can win that too. So, tons of great prizes we're giving away for the food drive ending on the 19th. So, you got to get in here quick. Bring some non-perishable food. Each bag gets you one ticket for a drawing. So, you bring in two bags, you get two tickets. So. Uh, make sure you're you're stocking up the local food shelf here in Bloomington to support those families in need. We love to do this cause, um, especially around the holidays. It makes you feel good, and oh, yeah. we're happy to give back. We love our community. We love to be involved in the community. And then after the food drive, oh, my favorite, we start the toy drive. We give kids some Christmas around here. Yep. We make sure kids have presents under the tree, and uh, we're doing our toy drive for the Union Gospel Mission. That'll That'll kick off. Uh, right after Thanksgiving, so stay tuned for that update. But uh, we have some business to talk about now. We have some. We are a comic store too, and we have to talk about what came out this past week. Um, Atomic Tommy, it's your turn to take over the show. Yeah, my turn. Finally, it's about time. <laughs> um, well, before we address the elephant in the room, there's a few things I want to talk about first. This first book, Transformers number two, great book, dude. This Transformers run is unbelievable. I. I yeah, I've never really been the biggest Transformers fan, but I'm quickly becoming one after reading this book. I mean, the, this is a the good darker, series. more serious take, the the more realistic take, the it's just awesome. The writer is really good. I have not too familiar with the writer on this book, but they they're really outdoing themselves here, man. If you this haven't read awesome. it, I highly recommend you start because you still have a chance to catch up what's going on, but Atomic Tommy is correct. This is a little more adult. It's not. It's not the eighty four cartoon. No, <laughs> it's not the eighty four. <laughs> quick, quick spoilers. So mute for a second if you haven't read it. But I absolutely love that Starscream just squishes humans. I love that the, with awesome. the hand clap, no less. With the hand clap, no less. I love. He, he it, gave I, the humans a standing O and then squashed them. I love that Optimus Prime accidentally kills a deer and just how bad he feels about it. That's just. 
that perfectly describes Optimus Prime as a character in just like two pages. It's amazing. Um, it's I'm gonna, perfect. It came around opening of deer hunting season. <laughs> yeah, perfect, <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect. It was perfect timing for that too. But anyway, it's a great book. Check it out if you haven't. Yeah, uh, Star Scream crushes humans. Optimus it's, Prime it, it's, steps on a deer. <laughs> it's single handedly. It single handedly. It, it, it's better than anything like DC has put out. I think I don't think there's anything from DC right now that can rival this. Coming from Mr. Flash quality. guy himself, I, I love Flash. And the DC. Flash, well, you're donning a DC sweatshirt here in our studio. And Listen, the Flash. I don't know. We'll have to see about the Flash, but it, it's definitely it's better than I'd say 95 percent of the stuff going at Marvel. There's some, there's still some good stuff going at Marvel, but this is great. This all this Energon Universe stuff is just amazing. Uh, moving on. I didn't read this book. This is Batman, but I just wanted to talk about the cover. This is the action figure variant, the McFarlane Toys action figure variant. Um, I've always been a huge toy collector. I've mentioned previously on previous episodes. Uh, I, you know, not a huge McFarlane collector, but I definitely have a couple on my shelf. And I've always been a sucker for action figure variants. And these really just take that to the next level, man. Forming these epic, like, pose covers and stuff with these action figures is just amazing. It's awesome. Uh, I definitely picked one up. I don't read Batman, but I definitely picked this cover up just because I love the action figure variants. Yeah, McFarlane's iconic. Yeah. Come on. Well, anyway, time to address the elephant in the room. Punisher number one. Is that, that was the yeah. big one. That was the big one that and came out. I'm not going to lie to y'all. wasn't that great. It wasn't, it wasn't very good. Um, I think the biggest reason is that, like, they... they they clearly didn't want to create like a Frank Castle clone. Like they wanted to make a new character, but they were too afraid to step out of his origin wheelhouse. I mean, this guy, what's his name? Like John Garrison or something Gar- like that. Garrison, yeah. Whatever. whatever. I, I don't even remember his name, but his. I mean, his I'm origin. Mr. G- Mr. Garrison's a South Park character. Mr. Gar- oh. <laughs> Mr. Garrison's uh, a South Mr. Park. Mr. Garrison. <laughs> but <laughs> it, no, and also, but they, they, his origin as the Punisher is essentially just the same as Frank Castle's. Somebody murdered his family. Oh, boy. You know what I mean? And I don't have a problem with, like, rebooting characters with new identities. It worked really well with Robbins. It worked really well with, I mean, some people don't like Robbie Reyes as Ghost Rider. I personally do. So, you know, it, it it's worked in the past, but it just doesn't work here. The Punisher is a very simple character. I think removing Frank Castle was a mistake. This character is just... I think less interesting and less engaging than Frank Castle it, because it might, it's, hey, it lo- everything being done with this character has been done before. I think so far. Obviously, it's just issue number issue one. Number one, you know. Look, I don't want to mess with Frank Castle. They already did that. They, they totally different characters. So, okay, so they're not touching Frank Castle. It's hard for me to like a different Punisher because Frank Castle was my Punisher. Right. So Garrison, don't like the name. So that's. Check mark number one. Number two, someone trying to sell me on the new design. Oh, it's still a skull and bolts. Look at the front. Look at how awesome that evil eyes. I said, all they did was take the Optimus Prime window plates and plop them on as his battle armor. Look at that. We're putting up the picture right now of I Optimus can, Prime. I can it's see it Optimus now. It's Optimus' Prime radiator front and his, his windshields. I mean, come on. Let, I get it. You don't want the skull and bones anymore. Whatever. So his ammo packs are now the, the bones in front. And and it, it, I was in debate at the shop. Oh, they're just trying to sell me and how cool. And, and it's like, that's not even close to intimidating. All they do is take Optimus Prime's windows and plot monitors his battle plates to make him look like evil eyes. And it just doesn't work. Plus, you know, the, the, the writing, too, wasn't really that good. Like, they, I don't know. The book kind of stopped to explain to me. I mean, spoilers. But the book kind of stopped to explain to me the logistics behind a railgun. Um, <laughs> I don't need to know the logistics behind a railgun. I know what a railgun is. Thank you. I don't. I don't. I don't need the book to explain to me why he's using a railgun. Uh, I also not a huge fan of the fact that I mean he was kind of thrown out a few quips. Like I know the Punisher. Like the Punisher. You know, he's not has, Peter Parker. He's not Peter Parker, and I know that the Punisher. You know, Punisher's makes, a badass. Throws out a few one-liners here and there, maybe delivers like a, a joke or something, you know, on occasion, but I don't know. But I it's got to like be when trying... you're killing somebody. Like, for example, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was good with the quips, right? He'd have right. some quick lines. But, 
Like when he shoved the pipe into Bennett in Commando, he said, let off some steam, Bennett. You know, yeah. that, I that's, mean, that's a cool one-liner. Frank right? Castle I mean, Punisher has done that in the past, and I'm not saying he shouldn't, but for a first issue, when you need to be establishing what kind of Punisher this is and, you know, how he's going to take what Frank, the legacy of Frank Castle and build upon it, I think kicking it off with a really cheesy one-liner to kill the main villain uh, – was a little uncalled for, and I think that was a mistake. So Punisher number one gets an F from me. They did not pass the test. They and did not I'm, pass the I'm exam. giving it a few issues. I'm giving it a strong D plus for the first issue. But uh, see, that, that that's an optimistic take. But but for me, I'm it's a Punisher like, guy, so I got to be optimistic. If you're rebooting a character, you need to absolutely hook people in the first issue. I mean, you have to let them know that this is like this. What we're doing is a good idea, and they did not do that with this issue. Well, think of it this way. You know, it was like kind of like when Force Awakens came out, everyone was like, okay, we got some nostalgia in there, so I'm not liking where it's going, but hey, we got the characters in there from the old. We're introducing some new ones. Let's see where this goes. Okay, we blew up the Death Star. Now we blew up a planet, so we've got the same kind of storyline. We got kind of a familiar theme, so it's kind of at ease. So Force Awakens, it's like everyone's like, okay, we're cool, and then it got in to the next one, and then the next one, and then... Everything went downhill from everything went south, you know. Um, Punisher, though, I mean, there's just I don't know. I'm still I'm still kind of optimistic, like watching the Force Awakens. You know, it. <laughs> I'm kind of optimistic to see if they can go now. We'll see what issues two and three bring, but uh, yeah, D plus. I'm still not gonna fail it. I'm I'm it's Punisher. It's my title, but yeah, it's a tough it's a tough call. But uh, Marvel, you can do better. Don't be afraid. Let it out. Let's let's get uh, let's get Mr. Garrison out of <laughs> what I <laughs> let's get him a little more. Now I I know that the Punisher. I think you know, Frank Castle at least had the, went on the whole spiel where he was uh, like he worked for the Hand or whatever, and he fought Daredevil in the the last Daredevil run before it, it rebooted under the current ongoing. But I mean, we, you you we can. I know that they wanted a new Punisher. They wanted a new Punisher for a while, but. I just, I'm just not into it. It's just not, it's just not good. <laughs> it, we'll it see. really isn't. It'll it, be, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it again at a future time. But yeah, a pui. We're done. Yeah, a pui. We're done with the Punisher. <laughs> We're done with that right That's now. Rough. Transformers is awesome. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, we have, well, we have to look forward to uh, coming on the docket on Wednesday. Yeah. You know, the, this week's looking really nice. I think, uh, Speed Force number one comes out. The two uh, sort of rebirth Flash characters that were introduced that they're gonna have their own little series. That'll be fun to read. Uh, also, GI Joe, the Real American Hero number three hundred and one. Yes, that's, a, a, that's gonna be a big issue. That's gonna be a big one. It's been a long time coming. Written by the talented Larry Hama, the icon, the icon Larry Hama. Uh, I'm looking forward to that again. Not a huge GI Joe guy, but I'm definitely gonna have to check it out. Yeah, I'm. I'm so looking forward to 301 because they're going to reboot the story and then we followed up with Duke, right? Duke comes out uh, next month and then Cobra Commander in January. Yeah, we already have people requesting those books. This is It's going to be big. I think it's going to be big like Transformers was. I think people are going to really like it. Yeah, I think so too. Cool. Well, hey, good good, good take, Atomic Tommy. We, yep. we know what's coming out on Wednesday. Uh, we're actually going to do... Um, Two shows, so we have the show we just did, and then coming up on um, Wednesday or Thursday, I'm not sure yet. On Wednesday or Thursday, we're going to launch another show just because people have been asking for a Tom McTommy's opinion on Marvel's movie, and, and he hasn't gone to see it yet, yeah. so he can't, yeah. we can't do we it on the show. We had a couple of requests to talk about the Marvels that came out on last Friday, and I'm seeing it probably either Monday or Tuesday. Um, but, uh, you know... We'll keep you guys updated. I didn't. I didn't want to leave you hanging, so I'm going to talk about Loki this week. I'm going to okay, talk about well, Loki to, to to fill to to wet the whistle. We're going to talk whistle, about Loki. I'm going to talk about Loki. I didn't want to. I know the Marvels is all the the all all the talk right now, but we'll get to that next week. Um, well, we'll do it. We'll do it midweek. We'll do a midweek. We'll sure. do a midweek okay, show. Yeah, just midweek to show. Get it in and we'll drop the Marvels review, and we'll um, have a special guest on midweek too. We'll do a guest. You know, we'll, we'll figure that out too. All right. Well, let's talk about Loki. Um, what, first of all, what do you think? You watched it with me. You know, you're not the biggest MCU fan, but you did tune into Loki, so I want to hear your take first. Okay, so it's really, really uh, confusing sometimes, <laughs> and you really wonder, like, you're watching this, and you're, 
thinking, what the hell is going on right now? I have no idea what's going on. He didn't do his homework. I didn't. I didn't do my homework. No, because I, I watched it from a from a non reader standpoint. So not knowing the depths of it, um, I understand the ending now. He's he's now the timeline. <laughs> I mean, kind of, kind of. I um first. Loki, Loki's character arc. I think this whole show, it's a really good show. I mean, it's definitely by no, it, it's it's a really brilliantly written show. I mean, it really it's complicated is. though. It's complicated, but it's. I mean, Loki's character arc is probably one of the best in the entire MCU. I mean, the only one that could maybe rival it is Tony Stark's, and to argue which arc would be better can is definitely debatable. But Loki's arc from a villain to a hero is just amazing. It, it really is. It was it was really fun to watch. Um, there probably will be some spoilers coming up, so if you haven't seen the final episode and you haven't seen anything, you know, you haven't watched the show yet, go ahead and skip to this time right now on the screen and, uh, you know, come back and watch it when you're done. But let's get into it. So how, how do I begin? Well, this show, I think part of the confusion comes from the fact that it doesn't really explain like how it like the time travel works in the show not only how it explains it but it it doesn't really do anything to answer any of the questions on how time travel works in the larger MCU because correct i have a, listen in avengers endgame they explained time travel to us where it was like if you go back in time and you change something uh you don't change your future but rather you create branch timelines that you know branch off and those branch timelines create the multiverse. That's how it was explained to us in in Loki, in Endgame, all that stuff. And then along comes uh, No Way Home and Doctor Strange 2, and they end up kind of shifting it to make it sound like it's actually like parallel Earths. Like there are parallel Earths, and that's the multiverse. So now we, we have these two different explanations for what the multiverse is, and they never really clarify which one. This one doesn't really help to do that either because, one, when Loki goes back in time... Um, he ends up directly changing his future, which, again, that, that is a very clear contradiction to everything that time travel was, ex- yep. how they were explained to us. Uh, and, you know, and, and they explain it under the guise of, while well, time works differently in the TVA, to me that sentence doesn't really mean anything because we don't even really know how time passes in the TVA to begin with. Like, we, you know, we really don't know anything about the TVA other than it was created by Kang, led by Kang, it exists outside of time, and they watch the sacred timeline. So we don't really know a whole lot about the TVA, so to tell me that it just passes differently, I mean, you got to explain a little bit deeper than that because now, I mean, did Loki create the multiverse? Is Loki, I mean, why can't branch timelines be created in the TVA? Like, it ultimately, I think, causes more questions and answers, and I yeah, I think it there's a lot of people that left confused and I'd be lying if I said that I was like some expert on Loki lore in comics. Like <laughs> I never read the Agent of Asgard stuff, which is what this show is uh like based on. Um so like the whole God of Story stuff and all that stuff I had to do some homework on to figure it out because ultimately this show just doesn't really explain any of that to you and especially it explains like how Loki progresses and, you know, his glorious purpose and all that stuff. I understand all that. But the deeper stuff, like the time travel stuff, the how it all works, where it all begins, where it all ends, I just it's it, it's ultimately more confusing than anything than anything else. Yeah, if if you want to uh watch this show from a casual just entertainment perspective, I think you're gonna get a little frustrated. Yeah. Um, so it's not the one to, to kick off. Say, you know, I'm going to start watching some Marvel streaming. I'm going to kick it off with Loki. <laughs> right. I don't think that's a and, good idea. I think uh, Loki's for the uh, uh, more into the comics, into the into the universe of Marvel uh, to watch that show. To be honest with you, I don't think it's meant for the casual Marvel viewer. Yeah, I I think that's true, and you know. Ultimately, the confusion part of it isn't really a... I'm sure in the writer's mind, it makes complete sense. So it's not really a like a complete like shutdown criticism of the show overall. I still think the show is really good. I think it's done. good, too, and I didn't understand it all. In fact, but, I have to watch it again because there's some yeah. parts. I, I Bottom line is, for me, it's a watch-it-twice stream. 
uh, have to watch the whole thing twice to, to get it because there was just too much yeah. for me to take in on the and first And I, I think, you know, one, I'm sure it's like, it's just, it should have, I think, answered more questions. And, you know, I, I understand that there needs to be some big MCU thing at this point. Like, the MCU and right now is sort of built on this idea that, you know, they really need to start ramping up now. Like, you know, all of these movies now, they're they're really focusing on trying to build up to this next next big stage. And I understand that Loki needs to do that, but you have to do it in a way that kind of makes sense and is clear. I mean, if you look at any, like, you look at any comment section about that final episode, and you're going to see people literally saying, I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> and, you know, if... You, that that's not a good place to be when you walk out of it. When you walk out of an episode and you say, "Wow, I have literally no idea what just happened," um, you know, that that sort of becomes a problem. And, and yes, again, the character arc with the, you know, I I understand like where Loki ended, right? You know, he sacrificed himself. He became yep. the the he he be, he took over as Kang. He became the new He Who Remains, and he, you know, went to you know, went to sacrifice himself to hold the timeline together and all these branches in the multiverse. I get that. I understand that. That's fine. But when you start to look deeper into it and into what that really means for the larger scale Marvel Cinematic Universe and what that means for, like, the multiverse and time travel is a concept that exists in the MCU, it starts to fall apart because it, you know, again, contradicts what these other projects have said, and that's a problem because the other projects contradict themselves as well. There's no clear explanation as to how any of this happens anymore or what any of it means. So I think ultimately it should have it just should have answered more questions, I think. That's a great take. <laughs> Thank you. I had to give you the applause on that one because that was a, a well-thought-out take, and... and you understand it more than I do. So for me, it's a watch twice. Great episode today. We're going to do another one uh, midweek here for you guys. So uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, a time to anything before we go? Yeah, you know, totally leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about Loki. Tell me what you thought about the finale. Uh, whether you loved it, whether you hated it, whether you agree with me, whether you don't, we love to hear it all. So make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Yeah, and we... Thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate it here. We're just a we're a small time, but we have a lot of fun. And uh, make sure you stop in for the food drive and help donate. If you live in the area, 9919 Lindale Avenue South in Bloomington, stop in and see us. If you're from out of town, please stop in and see us. We'd love to see you and talk to you and uh, welcome you to our little store. And uh, we think we have some fun stuff for you. So come and visit us. We'd love to see you in person. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.